Hi, I'm Molissimo, and if you don't know, I am currently writing my way through a 21 short story challenge. This challenge is based off of the Fortnum & Mason 21 Chocolate Library, where each chocolate has been given a cover design and a title to make it look like a little book, and I decided why not write a short story for each of those chocolates. If you want a little bit more in depth into my general thoughts and ideas for rules for this challenge, or you just want to see the challenge since its inception, I have linked the playlist where all these videos will be available. Go ahead and check that out. No need for any more delay. Let's go ahead and pick this week's chocolate. Okay, I am a little nervous and I don't know why. This, I have a feeling it's gonna be something really bad. Oh God, it's. It's gonna be the sugar-free one, isn't it? Oh no! Oh God. Oh, I've got one. Oh, my my fingers just went right for it. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay. Oh! Wait, sorry, that was a really extreme reaction. It's not the sugar-free one. The Lord has blessed me. <laughs> the one I drew was white chocolate. There is a bar in there that is just pure white chocolate. This is so bizarre. The first week when I had the lavender chocolate, I and I was thinking about what the next week's chocolate might be, I was thinking, oh, I hope it's the dark chocolate with coffee chocolate, because I just think I'm really curious to try that chocolate. And then this week I was thinking, I really hope it's the white chocolate. Or I was thinking more of like, I'm really excited to write the white chocolate bar because I, I know vividly what the cover looks like, the title, because it's one of, in my opinion, it's not to hype it up too much, but it's one of the cool ones. They're all cool. I'm really hyper today. I don't know what's going on. I'm really excited for this one. Oh, awesome. Let's pull it out of the library, shall we? We're gonna zoom into the chocolate. Woo! Oh, and of course it's off-centered. All right. Woo, which one is it? It's this one. It's time for the slow pull. Whoosh. That's the back cover. Prepare yourselves for this one. The title is The Icebreaker. And look, it's like a little ship but on a glacier or like in the in a frozen ocean. Look at that. And these are all little pieces of ice that it's breaking because it's an icebreaker. Isn't that fun? And we zoom back out now that that part is done. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely a little hyper today. That's fine. I kind of already have an idea of what I would want to write, but before I do that, I'm going to actually read the prompt this time <laughs> before making ideas. But I have like a, a vague inclination of it's like a research team in Greenland or something like that. Maybe it's a thriller like The Thing or, I mean, that I guess The Thing is more of a horror movie, but you know, just kind of the horror of isolation, which I mean, I think we can all relate to. Here we go. Oh, that was supposed to be a dramatic grip and it wasn't. So that's good. Okay, let's try from the other side. I think, ooh, slowly undressing it for you. Here's the prompt. You're seeing it before I am. Yay, you know before I know. What does it say, you guys? Okay, it says, hey. Okay, I got the location wrong. Okay, let me read it. When a ship full of scientists becomes icebound off the coast of Siberia, a family of Yupik offer refuge in exchange for their cocoa rations? What? Okay. Okay. What? I mean, I'm still... <laughs> okay, well now, J JK, maybe it won't be about the horror of isolation. Apparently it's gonna be about hot chocolate trading and commodities and stuff. Um... <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. I was definitely planning on taking this to kind of a darker, more chilling place. <laughs> I'm gonna do some Googling and then later today I'll come back and I'll actually eat this and give my general thoughts about the taste. I'll be back with a mouth review. What? Hello, it has been many a day since I last checked in. 
sorry about that. I'm pretty sure the last thing I said I was going to do was to eat this chocolate and give my review. I did film that, but real talk, my hair looked horrible in that clip and usually, usually I just let that slide. I've definitely talked with Bedhead before. This was a whole level of extra bad. I'm just not putting that out on the internet. Also, I'm not so sure how important the taste profile of this chocolate will end up being to the story in the end because my overall thesis of while I was eating it was that this chocolate, sorry Fortnite and Mason, is a little bit bland and tasteless. I was eating it right after I'd had dinner, so maybe I was just full and I like wasn't actually noticing the depth of flavor. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna give it a chance to redeem itself. I've only had a little breakfast today. I am getting kind of ready for lunch. I'm gonna eat a little bit and see if my thoughts have changed since last week when I had this for the first time. This is what it looks like. I've already had an entire bar. I'm going to try this tiny little square and see if it actually has flavor. <laughs> nope. Now, the last time I checked in, I think it was really quite right at the beginning where I read the prompt and said, okay, I'm gonna do some Googling and do some research. I now know that Yupik is a term referring to indigenous peoples in Eastern Alaska and very, very West Siberia. And I've done some kind of exploring around the internet to get an idea of the setting I'm gonna be in for this story and the people I'm going to be talking about in this story. Um, I saw, I found some really, really interesting videos, especially one that I think was from the Smithsonian Museum interviewing a Yupik woman and her oral history of how her grandparents used to make ceremonial clothing. And I could not stop watching it because it was one of the most fascinating things I've seen in a long time. I will link that video down below in case you're curious. But I've been debating with how I see this story going. Something I've been struggling with is that I think the prompt lacks a little depth here, which funnily enough is one of my main critiques of the chocolate, so I guess that's fitting. I've had a few kind of inklings of where I could take the story. How I see the day going, I'm gonna spend the first chunk really feeling out what kind of story I wanna tell here, the second few hours trying to go for an outline, and then the last bit aiming to get a draft. So yeah, that's where we are. Boop. I have spent the first sprint looking up factoids about St. Lawrence Island in Alaska because I think that's the general area in which I'm going to set this story. And just as a clarifier, yes, St. Lawrence Island is part of Alaska, but the prompt indicated that they were off the coast of Siberia and St. Lawrence Island is technically closer to Russia than it is to Alaska. So it's 36 miles away from Russia and that might be a little too far to be considered off the coast, but that's the direction I'm headed in. What else? What else have I done? Oh yes, this was the big one. <laughs> I went on the Portnum and Mason website as I always do whenever I'm doing one of these and I have discovered something interesting. Basically, I've discovered that Fortnum and Mason holds a competition every year for people to write short stories based off of these chocolates. I have two points of interest. The first is that they actually have someone's old submission for the icebreaker. And I'm telling you, it is taking a lot in me to not read it because I know that it will potentially affect my own work, but I'm definitely gonna read it once I have finished mine and I will link that below so you can compare if you'd like. Secondly, this is kind of the big one. It's a rule within this competition that the stories can't be more than 500 words. Half of me is thinking, oh, you know, your first two stories are more than 500 words. That's not a rule you need to follow. But then the other 50% of me is thinking, no, these are the official rules and we said that we were gonna make the rules along the way and these rules have been written for us. They're there. I don't know if I'm capable of writing a story in 500 words is the thing. I think I do have to do it though, even though I don't wanna do it, but I think I have to because it's right there. It's like written in the rules. I'm gonna go back into researching and I'm gonna be pondering this information as I do this. Okay, my arms are hurting from holding this up. Bye. Boop.
Okay, I have eaten lunch and I'm thinking it's time to do a really big pivot. And I literally Googled, I literally Googled how to write a micro story because I'm so not panicky, but just thrown by the idea that this story can't be more than 500 words. Well, it turns out a micro story is 300 words. So this is longer than a micro story, which is good, but still similar length. Um, but the website I found gave some good advice. And one of the pieces of advice was to pick a primary emotion to kind of ground your story in. And when I was talking with my writerly friends, the general emotion that was settled upon was fear, which I think is very funny because before I ever read the prompt, I totally envisioned this story as like a thriller, kind of isolation, paranoia, kind of mental perspective story. Uh, and then I read the prompt and I thought, oh, well, that totally threw me for a loop and guess we're going in a different direction but it kind of looks like we're gonna circle back. Katie had a really good idea that any person in this story other than our main character should be a hallucination. And I really like that idea. So instead of focusing on fear, I kind of want to focus on what happens after you've passed the point of fear as you are in an emergency situation and how, what your body does and what your brain does to comfort yourself, I guess. Kind of the overarching plot is going to be someone who was on this research ship that got stuck is trying to get to safety but it's kind of a hopeless situation and these 500 words are going to be the last kind of moments of their consciousness so that's really dark <laughs> um hmm. Oh well, it's just kind of what I'm feeling right now. You know, I'm not feeling cozy. I'm not feeling writing something sweet and cute and I don't know. And I'm not saying I'm gonna write dark and existential well. I'm not saying that, but it's what I'm in the mood to write. So I think we have to follow that line. And thank you to Katie for the direction because it's a good direction and it's one I'm excited about. That was the chair. It is very chilly outside, so as I write, I'm going to make myself some Fortnum and Mason hot chocolate and put it into a Fortnum and Mason cup. Hashtag not sponsored. Just because my main character isn't going to be cozy doesn't mean I can't be cozy. I think for flavor. I was supposed to technically melt this in milk and not water, but I'm too lazy to go and heat up some milk, so this will just have to do. It is very dark outside, but there is good news. I have what I think is a working media micro story. There's a beginning, a middle, and an end, which at this point, I'll accept it. The only caveat is that it is currently 552 words, so I need to go through and remove 50 words, and then I'm gonna send it off to my writing buddies so they will go through it and make sure I don't have any glaring grammar mistakes, and then potentially I might be done. For now, I need to cut 52 words. That feels like a lot. That's 10%. <gasps> when I think of it like that, that's 10% of the story. I have to cut 10% of the story. Ah, okay. Wish me luck. I'm so close. I'm so close. Just 11 more words. I can do it. I can do it. Can I get a huzzah? Never mind. I am at 496 words, happily. On my first read through trying to eliminate words, I ended up adding seven, but I felt they were important. So they stay in, but I managed to find over a dozen other words that were just a little bit more fluffy. And I feel like the story is not worse off without them is how I will phrase that. And I'm at 496. And I went through to see if there was a place where I could just sneak in four words, but this story doesn't have to be exactly 500. It just is a max of 500. So I'm gonna save 
that four word buffer room for when I have some friends look over the story just in case to fix a grammar error or something I have to restructure a sentence and I need to add in a few articles or adjectives or something like that. But this is so exciting. This story, I don't know why, it's taken me a while to sit down and write this story and I'm really glad that it's done well before the deadline of it needing to go up. So we're good. But yeah, I'm not gonna put the official stamp of approval on it until tomorrow after I send this off and get feedback. So I guess I'll see you then. Bye. Hi. Yes, I am wearing the same sweater I was wearing on the first day of this challenge. It is what it is. This whole process is almost done. My lovely writing friends, Katie and Devesha from Grape Fry have looked over my story, given me their thoughts, edited for grammar. The icebreaker, my version of the icebreaker is done. What are my overall thoughts on my own writing? I say that this story lacks depth which, you know, is also the critique that I had for the prompt and for the actual flavor of the chocolate. So I guess I can say I stayed on theme. Before I go, before I sign off and put a stamp on this week's story, I want to go back to the Fortnum and Mason website and read the version of the icebreaker that someone else submitted to their website. Because I just want to see how someone else interpreted this prompt. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, that was certainly interesting. To be honest, I don't have a ton to say other than that it certainly followed the prompt and that exhausts all of my thoughts on that version of the story. I'll link it below in case you're curious. Both the version on the Fortnum and Mason website and my version will be linked below or possibly my version will be in the description because it is 500 words and I think that might fit in the description. But I think I will also do what I did last week where I have an Instagram post with the full story in the pictures that you can swipe through. Or maybe not, it depends on how lazy I am today. That will conclude the journey of the icebreaker. I have already pulled the chocolate for next week and let me tell you, it was not a happy experience. <laughs> but you'll have to wait to see what that chocolate is next Thursday, or maybe the Thursday after that. It's really, there isn't a strict schedule because I am not strict with myself. I mean, I am strict with myself and then I rebel against myself. It's this fascinating cycle. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to cut myself off now because I am fully rambling. Go check out the stories if you are interested. And until next week or later, go be happy, go be healthy, and go write.